Hi, my name is Megan McGraw. I first became interested in data science when a company that I founded was generating millions of bits of consumer information per day, but my team lacked the skill set to gain insights from that data. It was that frustration that opened my eyes to the endless business problems that, with a career in data science, I would be able to solve. One thing that became quickly obvious is that there is huge value in classifying and categorizing the contents of images. Geospatial data processing is particularly hot right now, but images often contain undesired noise that needs to be removed. I wanted the goal of my project to be centered around taking a step beyond classification to edit or ameliorate images. That is to say, could I train a model to identify and correct undesired noise in an image and also ameliorate those images by removing that noise? So I was really excited to find this data set that needed ruled lines removed from road sketches. For the purposes of this project, we will consider the ruled lines what we want to remove, the noise. But y'all, I got even more excited when I found out that the data set was hand drawn by a Harvard trained first generation data scientist. And if that wasn't cool enough, it turns out that the nephew of this man is none other than my data science instructor here at Galvanize, Lan Belenke. Uncle Peter, was an avid sailboat enthusiast who loved sailing around New York back in the 50s and 60s. One of the ways that Uncle Peter's passion for sailing was expressed is through the numerous boat sketches in this data set. The goal of this project is to remove the ruled line from the images while preserving Uncle Peter's beautiful boats. Now for this task, I lined up two hypotheses. The first one used several edge detection filters to create variants clustered with k-means then applied non-negative matrix factorization to deconstruct, then rebuild the image. As you can see, the results of this hypothesis were nominal. Thus, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. The second hypothesis was to use a self-supervised convoluted neural network autoencoder to remove the lines. This idea was emboldened by a research paper I found which successfully removed staff lines from historic sheet music. The remainder of this presentation will focus, focus on hypothesis two. To set the autoencoder up for success, we first need to look at the given data. We have 454 ruled images of which the goal is to remove the lines from. We will set those aside for now as those will be the images that we run through the autoencoder after it's built and trained to see if we can get the desired results. Next, we have 669 unruled images. Since unruled images is the goal, this will be our, our target or our Y data set. With the help of NumPy, I copied the target, target data set and generated lines of random width and spacing to simulate the ruled lines. This new data set will be our X. Now, before we start lining up the results, let me take a quick minute to train the neural network between your ears. You'll be looking at a series of three images like those on the left of this slide. For two images, for the first two images, there are the before and after images. So your job will be to find the differences between the two. The third image is the difference image or the difference between the before and after. That tells you how much work the autoencoder has done to erase the lines. This third image can get pretty dense. So as we ratchet up the epochs, I'd encourage you to treat it like a magic eye picture and soften your gaze a little bit. Now I ended up running three different types of models, uh, structures to start with two of which did equally well, and I'll present the results of those two today. First up was the sparse model, aptly named because it only had six layers. The most successful version of this model used an atom optimizer and ran around 500 epochs. You can see it did a great job of removing only the horizontal lines while maintaining the integrity of the boats. Notice how the dense layer or the difference image is dense. The sparse model did a lot of work that can't be seen just by looking at the before and after images with the naked eye. Next up is the sequential model, which did equally well with both the Atom and the Atomax optimizer, but required considerably more epochs with Atomax to achieve the same results. This model has 10 layers or 67% more layers than the first and was run for an average of 175 epochs with the Atom optimizer. Notice the difference image for this model, which is more sparse than the previous model. It appears this model made fewer changes to achieve similar results. You won't have to read between the lines when you look at this slide. This side-by-side -side shows clearly that less epochs on a butter model 
will generate equal results to more epochs on a different model. The last thing that I did was to run an image through the autoencoder multiple times to see if it produced better results. I also stacked different models together to check those results. What I found was that multiple models stacked produced better results and no more than four passages per image. Any more than four passes and you start to get serious degradation of the boats. So in conclusion, the use of an autoencoder to recognize and remove lines can show significant results. Furthermore, passing images through multiple models or multiple times can increase the effectiveness of the line removal process. As you can see in this image, the autoencoder that was trained on boats was also able to remove the lines from non-boat images. This increases its original utility. Next steps to further refine this project would be adding slanted or squiggle lines for variation, training with colored images, or training on objects other than boats. I'd like to give special thanks to Lan Belenke and his uncle Pete for lining up this truly original data set that I got to work with. Thank you.